Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Swanna Men's Biology. So in this video, let us discuss about the kingdom Monera. So this is my third lecture in the lesson Biological Classification. So let us start. So coming to the kingdom Monera. So, so first we will see some of the introduction characters of the kingdom Monera. So before going into the topic, let us recall some of the questions which we have discussed in our previous topics. So five kingdom classification was uh, given by Linnaeus, Buttegar, Hooper and Bentham. So children, see the questions carefully. So five kingdom classification was given by, so we have discussed earlier it was given by Bittig. Now, coming to the second question. Which of the following is not a morphological character? A. Height, root size, flower color and cytology. Children, see the question carefully. Which of the following is not a morphological character? So, morphology means we know it will be telling about size, shape, color, etc. So here, height, root size, and flower color are the morphological characters. So here, the question is not, not the morphological character. So the correct answer is cytology. Okay. Now, children, let us see the third question. Two kingdom classification was given by Whittaker, Linnaeus, who's none of the above. It was Linnaeus who has given the two kingdom classification. Now, let us see the fourth question. Animals with any other red color than red color was known as Enema, Anaima, Unaima and none of the above. Children, we have studied this also in our previous videos. If you have not seen my videos, I will give the link. So, please check the other videos where I have explained where the organisms are divided into two kingdom classification based on the color of the blood into E. Nema and A. Nema. So A. Nema is the correct answer. So now let us see the fifth question. Identify the wrong statement. Two kingdom classification included only plants and animals. Aristotle classified both plants and animals. Linnaeus was able to distinguish between unicellular and multicellular organisms, none of the above. So, what is the wrong statement in this? Two kingdom classification included only plants and animals. Aristotle classified both plants and animals, it is correct. Linnaeus was able to distinguish between unicellular and multicellular organisms. No, it is wrong. So, C is the correct answer. Okay. So, now let us go into our class that is introduction and defining characters of the kingdom Monera. So, we know kingdom Monera includes bacteria, cyanobacteria, archaebacteria, etc. So, mainly the bacteria are the main members of this class and they, they live in the extreme habitats, means extreme hot and extreme cold. Most of the organisms are microorganisms and majority of them are autotrophs. And more means more number are heterotrophs. Means some are autotrophs and majority of them are heterotrophs. So autotrophs means they can prepare their own food material whereas heterotrophs depend on the other organisms for their food. So most of the bacteria are heterotrophs. Now, let us see the shapes of the bacteria which come under the morphological characters. So some organisms, if you see the picture, some of the bacteria are rod-shaped. So we have given the name to this rod-shaped bacteria as bacilli. Okay, Rod-shaped bacteria are called as bacilli. And some organisms, if you can see, they are round-shaped. And these round-shaped bacteria, we call them as cocci. Cocus. Now, some organisms are slightly bent, like karma. So, this karma shaped bacteria are called as vibrio. And some organisms are fully coiled, 
like this. Means they are spirally coiled, which we call them as spirillum. So, we have given the names of the bacteria depending on their shapes. Now, let us discuss about the kingdom monera. This kingdom monera, we know it includes mainly bacteria, archaebacteria and mycoplasma. Means, archaebacteria, the true bacteria, we call them as U bacteria. Wherever we will write U, means it is true and mycoplasma. So, now, let us take a small concept first. Bacteria are the sole members of kingdom monera, kingdom fungi, kingdom protista and kingdom animaria. Children, see the options carefully. Kingdom monera, kingdom fungi, kingdom protista and kingdom animaria. So now, just now we have seen that bacteria are the sole members of the kingdom monera. So the correct option is A. Now, let us discuss about the another subclass that is Archaebacteria. So, coming to the Archaebacteria, they also live in most harsh habitats, means they live in extreme hot conditions and extreme cold conditions. Okay, they are mainly halophytes, means they live in mostly salt waters, highly salt waters. And some, um, some of the Archaebacteria, some members of the Archaebacteria are dermoacidophiles, means they live in the extreme hot springs. Okay. And some even act as methanogens. They live in the marshy regions. So, what, what is the character which helps these organisms, that is Archaebacteria, to live in those extreme conditions? Because of the presence of the outer covering, which we call as cell wall. The cell wall helps these Archaebacteria to sustain in that extreme conditions. Okay, so it is different from that of the other bacteria, which helps that organisms to live in the extreme hot and extreme cold conditions. Okay, so we have seen some organisms um, help uh, as methanogens, means biogas, which is produced from the dung. It is because of the action of this bacteria, which are called as methanogens. Okay, now let us take a small concept test. Survival of the archaebacteria in the harsh environment is due to cell wall structure, flagella, cilia and none of the above. We have discussed just now, it is because of the cell wall structure. Students, are you able to follow? So, survival of archaebacteria in the extreme hot and the extreme cold condition is mainly because of the presence of the different cell wall structure to that of the other bacteria. Okay? Now, let us discuss about U bacteria. So, coming to the U bacteria, always remember, children, whenever when I am using U, wherever it is true, U carriots, true carriots means true nucleus is present. Likewise, U bacteria, these are the true bacteria. Okay. So, these bacteria, when they are motile, they move with the help of the flagella, and the cell wall is also rigid. Okay. They are widespread and they are known as true bacteria. Now, coming to the cyanobacteria. So, this cyanobacteria, which are called as blue-green algae, because they are photosynthetic in nature because of the presence of the chlorophyll pigment, they are autotrophs. So, they could be unicellular or they may be filamentous. Usually, they will be having a mucilaginous sheet around them. Okay, <clears throat> these um, algal blooms which are uh, present in the water bodies include the cyanobacteria. And, and another example is anabina. It is also a cyanobacteria. What is anabina do? If you see um, that is leguminous plants, the anabina is a bacteria which helps in the fixation of the nitrogen, which helps in the fertilization of the soil. And some bacteria are chemosynthetic, means these bacteria oxidize the nitrogen to produce the ATP. Now, coming to the heterotrophic bacteria, we know that most of the bacteria present in the environment are heterotrophic. So, mostly these organisms will be present in the, uh, mainly in the decomposing 
um, decomposing structures. And another example of the heterobacteria is lactobacillus. So this lactobacillus is uh, mainly helpful in the conversion of the milk into curd. So this lactobacillus, which is uh, helping in the formation of the curd, is also a heterotrophic bacteria. And so many bacteria will be present in the decomposing structures. And some bacteria are even useful for the production of antibiotics. And some bacteria, as we have studied, they help in the nitrogen fixation in the legume plants. So all these are the um, useful things of bacteria. And even the heterobacteria are uh, harmful in nature. They show some of the pathogenic effects. So one of the main disease which is caused by the heterobacteria, the heterotropic bacteria is cholera. The cholera is, a, is caused by Vibrio cholerae. And typhoid is another disease which is produced by the bacteria. It is caused by Salmonella typhi. And tetanus, it is caused by Clostridium tetanae. This Vibrio cholerae, Salmonella typhi, Clostridium tetani, these are all the bacteria which causes the bacterial diseases that is cholera, typhoid and tetanus. Children, there are harmful effects as well as useful effects of the bacteria. Useful effects we have seen. It is helpful in the formation of uh, the curd from the milk and helping in the nitrogen fixation. And some bacteria are useful in the formation of the antibiotics. Even there are harmful effects of the bacteria, which we are calling it as pathogenic effects, which causes some of the bacterial diseases like cholera, typhoid, and even tetanus. So coming to the reproduction in the bacteria. So this bacteria reproduces mainly by the fission where one organism splits into uh, so many organisms by binary fission. First, the nucleus splits, which is followed by the division of the cytoplasm, and cytoplasm surrounds each daughter nuclei, forming small, small daughter organisms, which is called as binary fission. And even when so many uh, daughter organisms are formed from a single parent, we call it as multiple fission. So binary fission, multiple fission, are the main asexual reproductive methods of bacteria. And some bacteria even show sexual reproduction, where there is a transfer of DNA from one organism to the another, which we are calling it as sexual reproduction. It is by DNA transfer. And in some organisms, it is by formation of the spores, where the bacteria produces a spores and the spores each spore will develop into a daughter organism. So now let us discuss about mycoplasma. So mycoplasma, so this mycoplasma are the smallest organisms which are uh, present and they, they doesn't contain any cell wall. So these are the smallest living cell we can say and they can survive without oxygen. So we can say even these mycoplasma are the bacteria without the coats or without the cell wall. So now children, let us take a small concept test. Which of the following is a causative organism of cholera? So children, see the options carefully. Vibrio cholerae, Salmonella typhi, Clostridium tetani, none of the above. So just now, we have seen the causative organism of cholera is Vibrio cholerae. So Vibrio cholerae is an organism which causes cholera. And we know the structure of Vibrio cholerae, it is comma shaped. So now let us summarize the entire topic. Bacteria are the most abundant microorganisms and are the sole organisms of the kingdom Monera. Based on their shape structure, so they are uh, they are classified into cocci, bacillus, comma shaped, and spiral shaped. And archaebacteria mostly live in harsh habitats. It is mainly because of the presence of cell wall structure. Halophytes, dermoacidophiles, and methanogens, all these three are archaebacteria, which live in the extreme salt areas and even the hot springs and the marshy areas. 
new bacteria are characterized by the presence of the cell wall and even flagellum if they are motile. And cyanobacteria, which are called as blue-green algae, they are unicellular freshwater and sometimes they are marine. They may be terrestrial, okay, which have the chlorophyll as a pigment, which helps in the formation of uh, their own food materials, which help of the photosynthesis. And the colonies of the cyanobacteria are surrounded by the gelatinous sheet. And some organisms of the cyanobacterium, like anabina, help in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen. In heterotrophic bacteria, if we see, they are most abundant in nature. They are helpful in the formation of a, a curd, as well as some bacteria are useful in the formation of the antibiotics, etc. And we even have discussed the pathogenic nature of the bacteria also, which causes vibrio color, which causes color, which is caused by vibrio color, typhoid, tetanus, etc. Now, coming to the mycoplasma, this is the smallest known living cells, which are anaerobic in nature. And they are pathogenic. Okay. So, children, so this is about the kingdom Monera. So, hope like you like this video. If you like, please give a like, share and subscribe my channel, Swannamam's Biology. So, in my next video, we will discuss about the kingdom Pratishta. Until then, stay tuned. Bye.